Conservative Book Club members, thank you for listening to our weekly author interview podcast series. I'm Chris Malagisi, editor-in-chief of the Conservative Book Club, now with over 650,000 members across the country. Today, our exclusive author interview is one of the best-selling action fiction writers out there, Stephen Kuntz, author of the newly released book, Liberty's Last Stand, published by Regnery. While I'm sure many will recognize Stephen from his best-selling book series, for those learning of Stephen for the first time, though, he has been called one of America's greatest thriller writers. He's the author of 16 New York Times best-selling books and has had his books translated and republished in dozens of countries. He is, his career took off with the publication of his wildly popular Vietnam War thriller Flight of the Intruder, which spent 28 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list and was later made into a blockbuster film starring Danny Glover and Willem Dafoe. The movie and book itself were inspired by Mr. Kuhn's own experiences flying an A6 intruder plane in Vietnam. Born in 1946, he grew up in uh, Buckhannon, West Virginia, a coal mining town of 6,000 people, and graduated from West Virginia University in 1968. Upon graduation, he was commissioned as an ensign in the U.S. Navy and received his Navy wings in 1969. His new book, a continuation of the Jake Grafton and Tommy Carmelini series, is already getting numerous accolades. Publishers Weekly says his books are gripping and that his naval background and his legal education bring considerable authority to the story. And the Cleveland Plain Dealer says that Kuntz makes us see, smell, hear, taste, and feel battle. Stephen, congratulations on your new book, Liberty's Last Stand, and thank you for joining the Conservative Book Club today. Well, thank you, Chris, for having me on your show. Well, we appreciate it. So, Stephen, tell us about your your new and exciting book, Liberty's Last Stand. Well, this book uh, really is a a political thriller. It's about what might happen if uh, we continue on the current course we're on. And uh, we have a president who responds to uh, terrorist incidents by declaring martial law. And uh, it's basically suspending the Constitution in the elections. And uh, that follows by uh, Texas uh, declaring its independence and, uh, you know, seceding from the Union again. And so a new Republic of Texas is born, and another American Civil War ensues. It's a big book, and uh, it's got a lot of, a lot of themes, a lot of plots and some plots, uh, and I hope it'll keep people awake nights reading. <laughs> for sure. Hey, Stephen, where do you get your ideas for your books? Oh, heavens, everywhere. You know, newspapers, uh, the Internet, uh, talking to people. Uh, you know, just the ideas are just floating around, and you try to put a mix of them together. I uh, certainly did for this book and come up with a what if. And uh, when I wrote this book in 2015, I never, ever suspected that, you know, it would come out, you know, one day after this atrocity in uh, Orlando. And so, you know, I guess terrorism is here to stay. It's not a question of uh, if, it's only a question of when and where. And but So I used the terrorist incidents to start the book, and the president declared martial law. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. Here I just was just reading the West Virginia senator, Joe Manchin, says that our problem is due process. You know, he's willing to mm-hmm. apparently jettison the constitutional guarantees about uh, due process and habeas corpus to uh, in return for security. That's called tyranny. Well, I, I, I can't believe the timeliness of your book, uh, just with uh, the shock of where everything that happened in Orlando this past week. Um, you know, I'd love to get your thoughts on it, because a lot of the themes in your book do parallel uh, terrorism. Um, but what, are, what are your thoughts on the recent Orlando terrorist attack? And as well as I know you've been vocal about Second Amendment rights as well, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on that. Well, I think that uh, the terrorism is... Uh an uh, outgrowth of uh, fundamental Islam, and uh, this is really not a religion. It's more of a political action culture that uh, allowed uh, Muhammad back in the seventh century to uh, galvanize his followers and set forth to conquer the world. And uh, he conquered a big chunk of it, got thrown out of Europe. But it's still the same thing. If you read the Quran, you know you find that uh, they're against homosexuality. They regard women as chattel, 
They don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in any of the things that most Americans hold dear. Uh, they don't believe in freedom of speech. They don't believe in freedom of religion. They don't believe in uh, due process of law. And uh, they certainly don't believe in having anyone having weapons other than themselves. It's it's a scary a scary culture, and I think uh, you see what happens when it impacts Western civilization. You saw it in Paris. You saw it nine one one. You know, you saw it in USS Cole. You see it in Orlando. You know, the list goes on and on and on. Well, in a little more lighthearted note, uh, you, you also, oh, ha, it appears that you might have some amazing parallels to uh, the, the current president right now. I, I looked at uh, page 26, you have the character in the, in the book Liberty's Last Stand, Charlie Swim talking about an African-American president who's rewritten the immigration law, refuses to enforce the drug laws, has the EPA rewriting the rules without Congress's approval, who likes to go on a lot of golfing vacations. Um, Stephen, that sounds like a, a similar presidential administration we know all too well. Well, that was obviously intentional. <laughs> and uh, I uh, named my president Barry Sotero, which was, of course, the name that uh, Barack Obama used at uh, Occidental College in uh, California and then at Columbia University when he was a, quote, foreign student, unquote. And so ah. I just used that name, and uh, I don't, I haven't had any blowback on that. <laughs> Obviously, uh, the libel laws allow you to say anything you wish about a public figure, and the President of the United States is certainly a public figure, and so uh, I don't anticipate anything other than liberal condemnation, <laughs> which I'm getting, but I expected it, and so life goes on. <laughs> Well, there's something else that when I was reading it, too, that's something that struck me. Um, essentially, the book, in part, is a story about a tyrannical president abusing his constitutional power, uh, imposing martial law, like you said, canceling a, a presidential election, suspending the Constitution itself. I was wondering, too, in a strange parallel with this year's presidential election, are you potentially warning us as well about one of the two presidential candidates, or both, running this year, by chance? Well, I think that uh, President Obama set a terrible precedent by, uh, you know, in effect, unconstitutionally extending his powers that rule by decree will change laws that he doesn't like, fail to enforce laws, uh, you know, rewrote the uh, Obamacare law. All this stuff is a precedent for future presidents, and it's even scary. The Constitution very carefully sets out a division of powers, and that's the bedrock of our liberty. So, yeah, I guess, you know, it can go either way, and any way it goes is going to be bad. Well, is Liberty's Last Stand, I, um, compared to your other books, um, are they as political? Uh, did they have the overarching political themes that are obviously evident in Liberty's Last Stand? Um, no. I, the short answer is no. The uh, my previous books are, are shoot 'em up thrillers. They're, you know, the classics in the genre. They, you know, the good guys save the world as we know it from the forces of evil, but uh, it's they're non political. So why do you? Wanted, oh, I'm sorry. I go wanted ahead. to write a political book, and uh, you know, so much is happening with Jade Helm and uh, the FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, getting ready to declare war against uh, right-wing constitutionalists, whom the president says are great enemies. And uh, you know, I just thought, boy, this could go south. And so I, I wrote the book. Uh, my publisher at the time uh, didn't want it. They said it's too political. And so I, uh, my agent shopped it around, and Regnery took it. And so I was delighted that I found the publisher for it. And it was just it was just too hot for my uh, St. Martin's Press, whom I've been with for 19 years. Wow. Well, it's an, it's a wonderful message, and it's unbelievably timely, especially with everything happening, Stephen. And um, wish you all the best of luck with the book. We're going to be promoting it hard here at CBC. And, you know, special thank you for your military service to our country and taking the time to talk with us today. We wish you all the best of luck on your new book, Liberty's Last Stand. 
Well, thank you very much. They have a wherever good books are sold. <laughs> <laughs> well, CBC members, make sure to check out conservativebookclub.com to learn more about Stephen Kuntz and his new book. Thank you again, Stephen. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thanks again.